So let's look at how you can construct an ellipse when you've been given the focal point or using the arc method. Stop work. So we consider an ellipse with major axis A, B, and the minor axis C, D, like that. And the center O there. Now, when you are constructing an ellipse using the previous method that we discussed, the concentric circle method, we the only thing that we needed was just the distance, the minor axis, the major axis and the minor axis, right? Yes. And then we can use the concentric circle method where one of the axes represents uh, the diameter of the bigger circle and then the other one the diameter of the smaller circle, right? Now, using the arc method, when you've been given an ellipse, there are what we call uh, focal points. And those focal points are two points that are located on the major axis okay the relationship between the focal point and uh, these two axes is that when you get half the major axis for example a o or maybe o b the distance right so a o which is equal to o b should equal the distance from C to the focal point. Okay? Should equal the distance from C to the focal point. For example, maybe focal point 1, which is the same as the distance from D to the focal point. Or maybe let's just write focal point. Do D to the focal point. Like that. Meaning, if you have an ellipse like this, you've been taught to find the focal point, okay? You just get the, uh, the distance, which is half the major axis, and then place your compass at point C, strike an arc along the minor, along the, the major axis there. Then you will find the focal point. Or you can place your compass at point D, strike there, it will land you at the same point there, right? Even this other side here, when you strike your, uh, your compass from point D, along there, along that, that line there, you have uh, another point. So we can call this point focal point 1 and focal point 2 there. So what does this mean? This means if you have the focal points, it, it, some, there are some cases where you're just given maybe the major axis of the ellipse and the location of the focal point, right? From this information here, it is possible that you can find the minor axis because you know the relationship come in, because you know the relationship between the focal point and uh, the axis can you come in? if you know the location of the focal point and you have the major axis there then it is possible that you can find the minor axis because we know that the minor axis will pass through the center of the major axis right and we know that the distance from uh, a to O will be the same as the distance from F to C. So you just stand at, you, you open to this distance, you stand at point F, you strike an arc along that line, then you'll get your point C. Just like if you have the major axis and the minor axis, you can find the focal point using the same equation there. When using the arc method for constructing an ellipse, okay? We use these two points, the focal points. So this, we can have an example. Okay, we can have um, this data, and then we've been told to construct an ellipse, right? So here, what we've been given is just the major axis and the position of the focal point on the major axis. Even though from this data, it is possible that we can um, come up with the minor axis because we have the major axis and we have the, the focal point the location of the focal point on that major axis but we want to use the arc method to construct our ellipse so what we are going to do is we are going to draw a line that will represent the major axis 
and we um, mark the focal point on that major axis and see what follows next. So can we do that? Let's draw a line that will represent the major axis, meaning it will be 130 millimeters, right? So we have a line that is equal to 130 millimeters, and then we can also locate the focal point on this line because we know the distance um, of the focal point from point A as well as the distance of the focal point from, from point B, right? Our focal points F1 and F2, focal point 1 and focal point 2. At this point, we can also draw a line or an axis that will pass through the center of this um, major axis to represent our minor axis, though we are not going to get the measurements. Just a line that is meeting at 90 degrees with the major axis there, right? So we are now uh, constructing using that method there. We have what we've been given, right? Drawn here. So here, you want to mark a minimum of uh, four marks along uh, this line, the major axis. A minimum of four marks from the focal point here. One, two, three, four. So any radius of your choice, you can have four, four equal marks, or five equal marks, or even six equal marks. It doesn't um, really matter, but at least a minimum of four. So you just get your compass, open it to any radius of your choice, and then you stand at the focal point. You say one, two, at least five. As long as you do not exceed the center point of the line. You get your compass, open to any convenient radius, stand at the focal point, start making these marks. You can even have 10, as long as you don't exceed the center point there. So we have our one there, four, five in my case. For you, you can even go up to 10, depending on what you're comfortable with. Okay? But as long as there the are equal marks there. Are we there? Okay, after making those marks, you get your compass. So you get your compass, place it at point A. Okay, this is the simplest part now. You get your compass, place it at point A, open it to one. So meaning you get the distance A1. Are we together? You get your dis the distance A1. A1 like this, right? And then you stand without changing the, the radius, okay? You get the distance A1 without changing the radius of your compass, you stand at the focal point. And then you mark on top and at the bottom, you strike an arc. Peter. Okay, let's pause a bit now. After market, so obviously these are supposed to be faint, right? These are supposed to be faint. So here we're saying you get the compass, you get your compass, open it to that distance, right? And then you stand at the focal point there, strike an arc. So what, what is supposed to happen here under normal circumstances, right? Whatever we did decide is supposed to be done even on the other side of the, of the drawing inside, right? So these equal marks are supposed to be marked even this side. Now, since this is the center line and the focal points are located at the same distance, so it will not help us that much. We'll, not, we'll just waste our time to start doing the same things here, right? But what we can do is, what we have done, because if we get the distance A1 here, it will be the same as B1, because if we are getting the same distance here, it will be the same throughout. You get the point? So if we get the distance A1, it will be the same as B1. And when we stand at focal point one, strike an arc, strike an arc with that distance. 
It is the same as standing at this point, strike and arc, strike and arc. Okay. So the same distance that we, we used here, we come to the focal point two, we make the same arcs. Okay. With the same distance that we used, which is A1, we come to B to focal point two here and strike an arc. Strike another one here. Now I have your attention. It is worth noting that here we are only dealing with this distance. Okay? And what we did this side, we did also on the other side there. Faint lines, yes. The second point now from this axis here, the second point is you stand at point uh, B. Okay? Standard point B open to one because we are still dealing with one, right? So you stand at point B open to one. Meaning you get the distance B one. With the distance B one, right? You stand at the focal point. So the measurements are got are gotten from either B or A, but when striking those arcs, you are standing at the focal point. Remember this. You stand at the focal point, strike an arc, strike another arc. So even this side, maintaining the same distance, you stand at the, the focal point here, right? You strike an arc to meet with the first one and other one there. Same distance. B1. Meaning you have dealt with them. Point 0.1. Okay? And then you go to point 0.2. So you get the distance A2. And then you move to point B. Okay? You move to point B open to 2. Place your compass at point B, open to 2, so that you have B2. Okay? So you have B2 there, right? And then, with this B2, you stand at the focal point, you strike an arc. And you strike an arc there. Okay? Again, you stand at point F1 there, the other focal point, with the same distance or same radius, strike an arc, strike an arc. The next step is you go to point 3. Okay? You go to point 3. So you, you open your compass to A3. Okay? A3, stand at the focal point. Strike an arc. Strike an arc. You stand at the other focal point. Strike an arc. Strike another arc there. Again, the procedure is the same. You open to, you, you stand at point B, open to three. Stand at that focal point, strike an arc, strike an arc, come to this other focal point here, strike an arc, strike an arc. We go to point four. You get the distance A4. Stand at the focal point, strike an arc, strike an arc. You come to the other point, the other focal point, strike an arc, strike an arc. Here, you open to, you stand at point B, open to four, meaning the distance will be B4.
Okay, if that's your B4, you stand here, strike an arc, strike an arc. You come here, strike an arc, strike an arc. You go to point 0.5, meaning the distance will be A5, right? Go on the focal point, strike an arc, strike an arc, come to the other focal point, strike an arc, strike an arc. You get the distance B5, B5, stand on the focal point, strike an arc, strike another arc. You come to the other focal point there, strike an arc, and strike another arc there. So you draw ellipse by connecting the points. And you always remember that an ellipse doesn't have corners, but it's supposed to be a curved path. So when connecting these points, 